Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, who bore the Creator of all things. You became the mother of your Maker, and you remain forever virgin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, this Saturday, as we celebrate this Mass in honor of Our Lady, Together with our mother and through her eyes, let us always look at our lives as a source of good news of salvation coming from God. And so to prepare ourselves for this Eucharist, let us first acknowledge our sins and humbly ask Him for pardon and mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness that we who keep the memorial of the Holy Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up 
from our iniquities. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God called to Adam and asked him, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, but I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Then he asked, Who told you that you were naked? You have eaten, then, from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat. The man replied, The woman whom you put here with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and so I ate it. The Lord God then asked the woman, Why did you do such a thing? The woman answered, the serpent tricked me into it, so I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you shall be banned from all the animals and from all the wild creatures. On your belly shall you crawl, and dirt shall you eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head, while you strike at his heel. To the woman he said, I will intensify the pangs of your childbearing. In pain shall you bring forth children, yet your urge shall be for your husband, and he shall be your master. To the man he said, Because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree of which I had forbidden you to eat, cursed be the ground because of you. In toil you shall eat its yield all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles shall it bring forth to you as you eat of the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face shall you get bread to eat until you return to the ground from which you were taken. For you are dirt, and to dirt you shall return. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of all the living. For the man and his wife, the Lord God made leather garments with which he clothed them. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become like one of us, knowing what is good and what is evil. Therefore, he must not be allowed to put out his hand to take fruit from the tree of life also and thus eat of it and live forever. The Lord God therefore banished him from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he had been taken. When he expelled the man, he settled him east of the Garden of Eden, and he stationed the cherubim and the fiery revolving sword to guard the way to the tree of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Before the mountains were begotten, and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You turn man back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight 
or as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. You make an end to them in their sleep. The next morning, they are like the changing grass, which at dawn springs up anew, but by evening wilts and fades. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. In every age, O Lord, you have been our refuge. Please stand. One does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days when there again was a great crowd without anything to eat, Jesus summoned the disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. If I send them away hungry to their homes, they will collapse on the way, and some of them have come a great distance. His disciples answered him, Where can anyone get enough bread to satisfy them here in this deserted place? Still he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They replied, Seven. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then, taking the seven loaves, he gave thanks, broke them, and gave them to his disciples to distribute, and they distributed them to the crowd. They also had a few fish. He said the blessing over them and ordered them distributed also. They ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over seven baskets. There were about 4,000 people. He dismissed the crowd and got into the boat with his disciples and came to the region of Dalmanutha. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, we have been following the story of creation in the book of Genesis for the past days, especially for our uh, daily mass goers. If you will notice, we have been reading from this uh, story of creation. And uh, today, we focus on the part on what we usually call as the fall of man. When Adam and Eve disobeyed God and instead ate of the fruit because they were tricked by the serpent. And because of this, because of this fall of man, 
it resulted in man, Adam and Eve, being banished from paradise. Is it good news or bad news? If we would read this part of Genesis, we would easily think, oh, this is indeed bad news because man fell to sin and man therefore was banished from paradise. But my dear brothers and sisters, in this part of Genesis, theologians and uh, scripture scholars do not only see bad news in this part, but in this part of the book of Genesis, theologians would say that they have located what they call the Proto-Evangelium. So, Father, you may ask me, Father, what is the Proto-Evangelium? What does this mean? Proto means first. Evangelium is gospel or good news. So, according to theologians, when you read this passage, you can see the first gospel. And where is the first gospel here? Remember that in this story, when God was talking to the serpent, we can see here, God says to the serpent, I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. Maybe when our lector was reading, the first reading uh, earlier, we only noticed the bad news. That man fell, that man was banished from paradise, but we did not notice in that small passage from God, there is good news. And that is, God already said that one day, the woman, Mary, and her offspring will strike at the head of the serpent. One day, the good news will be fulfilled that a man will be born of a woman who will defeat the serpent. I hope, my dear brothers and sisters, that in this passage from Genesis, in the midst of the bad news of the fall of man, of the banishment of man from paradise, we could also see the spark of good news given to us by God. The first gospel, the first good news proclaimed in the book, in the Bible, which is found in Genesis. My dear brothers and sisters, I think this teaches us also that in the midst of bad news, in the midst of the pandemic, in the midst of problems and challenges in our lives, we should also look at the spark of the good news always given by God. Madalas po ay tinitingnan natin at nakikita natin minsan ng ating buhay na punong-puno ng pagsubok at nakakalimutan na natin tingnan at makita ang mabuting balita na dala ng Panginoon. We look at our lives as full of challenges and yet we forget to see that God brings even a small spark of good news. So, my dear brothers and sisters, 
I think it is time for us when you review your day, when you review your life, look closely. We may have missed the small spark of hope given by God. In the story in Genesis, we are focused so much on the fall that sometimes we forgot the small detail that God has already revealed His good news there in the small passage. Look into our lives. Examine ourselves. Examine our day-to-day -day lives. Sometimes we just need to look closer and see that in the midst of this pandemic, God provides a spark of the good news. That is also what happened in our gospel today. The feeding of the uh, 4,000 in this passage from Mark. There were 4,000 people and all the disciples were able to see was the problem. How can we feed the 4,000 men? But Jesus saw a small spark of good news. There were seven pieces of bread and a few fish. For us and for ordinary disciples of Jesus, we can only see the problem. How can we feed these people? But Jesus saw a small spark of hope seven pieces of bread and there Jesus made his miracle a small spark of hope became a miracle to feed the thousands my dear brothers and sisters please today let us try to look into the small details of our lives Baka nakatago dyan ang spark of the good news from God that most of the time we may have already missed. Tingnan po nating mabuti ang pang-araw-araw nating buhay. Baka na, nawawala o nalilimutan natin, nawawaglit na sa paningin natin na sa gitna pala ng pinagdaraanan natin, may ibinibigay ang Diyos na munting liwanag ng pagsubok ng pag-asa at nandoon makikita natin sa pag-asa na binibigay ng Panginoon ay kakapitan natin ng may pananampalataya. I'm not sure if uh, many of you here attended the Mass because you want to have a mission cross. <laughs> so, kahapon ang dami pong nagsimba, no? Because they were looking for uh, the, the 500 years mission cross. You know, this idea of having a mission cross came from a few priests, us here in the Archdiocese of Manila. And uh, we said, since it is a 500 years event, why don't we, you know, start this project of having a mission cross? And you know, in the beginning, we received criticisms. Sabi nila, eh, bakit ba may mission cross pa itong Archdiocese of Manila? No? Na, na, ano, patuloy kami, no? Sabi nila, eh, pumapapil na naman yung Archdiocese of Manila. No? Sabi tuloy nila, eh bakit ba may mission cross na naman ng Archdiocese? No? Eh ano na namang programa yan? No? And you know, to our surprise, this small project of having the mission cross really, you know, blown up into a big proportion. And at first, we thought it is only for the Archdiocese of Manila. But now, people from the United States are calling us, no, where can we get your mission cross? No? 
people from other countries, from other dioceses. Sabi nga nung isang pare, nag-text sa akin, sabi, kayo talaga, nagsimula na naman kayo ng programa nyo. Patituloy kami sa ibang diocese, sa parokya ko, hinahanapan din ako ng Mission Cross. No? Eh sabi ko sa Archdiocese of Manila lang yan, no? but people are looking for the Mission Cross. Sabi ko, eh, hindi ba kayo masaya niyan na ang mga tao nagkakarap ng cross so that they could wear their faith for the 500 years? Kaya sabi niya, oo nga, tama ka, no? Sige, o order na kami, no? <laughs> Nang uh, 300 pieces, no? Para may maibigay din kami at ma-distribute sa mga tao, no? So slowly, this small spark, this small project of the Mission Cross that started here in the Archdiocese of Manila has now slowly being spread in different parts of the country and the world. I think, my dear brothers and sisters, sometimes we just need to look at the small spark of hope given by God. And then we will see that God will do wonders, will do His miracles, even in small sparks of goodness and hope. My dear brothers and sisters, in this Eucharistic celebration, Let us look closely into ourselves. Where are the small sparks of hope given by Jesus? And later, as we receive the Eucharist, that small bread that we will receive in communion, we will see that in that small piece of bread, there, the spark of hope coming from God resides and gives us strength. In this Eucharist. Amen. Please stand. In the miracle of the feeding of four thousand people. Our Lord shows us that the Father will give us everything we need. Let us ask Him for all the gifts He can provide us. For every petition, let us say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That our pastors, especially the Pope and the bishops, may continue to nourish us with sound teachings. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who work to combat famine may be successful in their effort to feed millions of starving people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who hunger for Christ may find the one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick and the handicapped may find care, support, and consolation from family members. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful departed may come to the eternal feast in God's kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty Father, you have given us the bread from heaven as food for our pilgrim journey. Guide our steps in the way of justice and peace. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated.
please stand. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. As we honor the memory of the mother of your Son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may by your grace make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise, bless, and glorify your name in veneration of the blessed ever-Virgin Mary. For by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, she conceived your only begotten Son, and without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy 
to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Broderick, our administrator, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your Son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We would like to thank all those who have joined us in this celebration and also those who are joining us through our online streaming of this Mass. We thank you for your continued help, support, and donations to the Manila Cathedral. And today also, I would like to thank the presence of uh, the, uh, sis the Salishan Sisters of the Sacred Heart who are here, who joined us in this celebration. Uh, led by Sister Sandra. I think she is here. So, Sister Sandra, thank you for bringing your sisters here and for giving us a witness of your missionary work. And we pray for your uh, uh, continued perseverance in your missionary work here in our country and even in other countries in Indonesia. So, thank you for uh, your giving your yes to God's mission as we uh, celebrate this year also our 500 years of faith in our country. Thank you for sharing with us your work of mission. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Lord, we give our yes. 